crime fanatics. Come on in. We're going to talk about true crime. And, uh, yeah, I am working on feeling foxy. I'm trying to get as many whips as I can possibly get done before I move house. Uh, that's my plan right now. But, of course, it fits into spring things. It has flowers and a fox, so it works. But here I am. Um, I have... It's Sunday evening. It is Sunday evening. Well, I say evening. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, but I have um, just had a, a chit-chat with a very good friend of mine. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, made me feel a whole lot better about everything that's going on with me personally. And, uh, yeah, I thought I'm going to sit down. I'm going to die and paint. And... We can talk about true crime, right? We can talk about true crime. Why not? I'm in this true crime zone. So um, I found another case. Like, I don't know how I stumble across these things. I just end up clicking links and finding people. And then I'm like, say what? You did what? That needs discussing. Like, there's, there's some seriously deluded people out in this world and uh, I seem to find them on uh, the internet and bring them to Sunday nights. <laughs> it's the only way I can put it. Yeah, so I'm working on feeling foxy. I'm using my beast tray. I don't know what's happened to it, but it's warped a little bit. Um, but I'm using several trays. You'll see me switching them all throughout, throughout the episode probably uh, because I like to work multiple colours at any one time and, and I have my little system that keeps them all so I know what symbol is what symbol. Wow, okay. So, should we dive into today's episode? It's crazy, it's crazy. It's nuts. Uh, my my Google search, I fall into these things and I'm like, this, this needs a discussion. So I found this case. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a very long episode. Um, I'm currently working on one episode that I talk about multiple um, true crimes. I think I might save that while I'm MIA uh, because, you know, I'm still working on it for one. And again, it keeps sending me down rabbit holes. But I've, this, this lady is completely unrelated, and yes, it's a, a lady. Um, it's completely unrelated. I just happened to come across this case, and I was like, you did what, and when, and why? Uh, so I thought I'd bring it to your attention on, on a Sunday evening. Uh, you're all currently talking about... Uh, John List, the guy who murdered his whole family, uh, that's just gone out and you're all watching that right now and I, I, I love I love your comments. Let's just quickly go to those because this might be a thing I do um, on the last episode. Um, Dawn Marie, hello Dawn Marie. Wow, just wow. Honestly, neither one of them had any morals, so they made a great couple. But on a serious note, it's so scary what money does to people. The root of all evil. Yeah, no joke. Uh, it is normally, sometimes, 99% of the time, based around money. And uh, they think they can get away with it and claim insurance policies and, and no one would be none the wiser it's, it's insane but uh, i don't actually know if they he actually did get um insurance you know life insurance on his family i, I there's no mention of it so i'm assuming that wasn't a factor at that time okay who else do we have 
Tammy. Hello, Tammy. Simon. Hey, Cindy. Wow, he was one sicko person. Pure evil. I wiped out his whole family. Just, you know, as the title said, accept welfare or murder your whole family. And that's what he chose to do. Dan. Hello, Dan. Oh my goodness, many of these true crimes have shocked me, but this one stopped me in my tracks. Yes, I, it, I have been coming out with more and more kind of shocking true crimes lately. Uh, you know, the young lad who um, stood at the, who stood over that elderly couple uh, just because he wanted to commit murder. He wanted to be a, a serial killer. I can't remember his name. Uh, off the top of my head I, I can check but yeah that was a shocking one and then uh, the wrestling fan uh, who murdered her kids that, that was pretty bad um, yeah more and more shocking they're not just the uh, the mundane and uh, sorry but that's what you're here for right you're here for the uh, the facts of the case so I like to keep as many facts in as I can because uh, if I just you know uh, didn't go graphically sometimes it kind of takes away from the brutality of the murder so Sharon Martin hello evil man he knew exactly what he was doing and if he wasn't in his right mind, it would not have been so organized. Him and his wife made a right pair. Those poor children. I was talking to Sharon privately. She came to me and she was like, what happened to Brenda? Uh, because, you know, Brenda married and moved out of the home. So I think she kind of escaped out. There was no mention of Brenda um, after the fact. Uh, I don't know if she attended the trial or anything. Some of these older cases, um, you can't research uh, as much as more the, the more recent ones that are now, you can watch the trials on YouTube and stuff like that, but some of the older ones, not so much. So there's not always the information at hand, but yeah, I, I, I hope, um, I mean, she lost her mum and, and all of her brothers and sisters. So I hope she's doing well wherever she is. And um, yeah. My heart goes out to her for sure. But there was no more mention of her, so sorry, can't help you on that one. Okay, let's dive into today's true crime. I'm actually doing it. What I normally do is diamond paint, um, and then I talk over the top. But actually, right now, we're doing it in real time, so there probably won't, probably won't be many drills being placed while I uh, do this true crime. But that's okay. You're not watching me anyway, are you? You're dime painting or um, potting around yourself. So, yeah. Okay, so this lady, I like to put the photos up on so you get to see who, it, who we're talking about. But this lady, her name is Tracy Wigington, I, I want to say. She is known, as the title of the video is, The Lesbian Vampire Killer. And today we're going to Australia. She, she's an Australian murderer. Okay, so early life is where I like to begin because I like to see what happened to make them do what they did. Tracy grew up in the northern Australian coastal city of Rockhampton. She was adopted at the age of three by her wealthy maternal grandparents, George and Avril, after her mother could no longer care for her following her divorce. Tracy claims that her grandparents were controlling and had physically and sexually abused her. In 1981, Tracy's grandparents died and left 15-year-old Tracy 
$75,000. I'm guessing that is Australian dollars. So that would be $310,640. Tracy briefly moved back in with her mother who was not accepting of her being a lesbian. And then she moved in with a family friend who described her as a, quote, a loving girl, gifted artist and devout Catholic, end quote. Following a miscarriage, Tracy stopped attending mass and started communicating with a white witch in Adelaide. Following a move to Brisbane, Tracy began to immerse herself in the occult, keeping black magic items on her person and using blood from animals to draw occult symbols. I just, just a side note here, we, we hear a lot of these occult murders and the pentagrams and, and everyone seems to think that um, the Wiccans and the Pagans, they're all murderers and they're not. It, it's, you can go down a dark path with it for sure, uh, but not everyone who believes in all of that ends up being imprisoned, shall we say. Tracy, who allegedly killed and drank the blood of animals, had been planning for some time to escalate to murdering a man so that she could feed on him. On the night of the murder, because obviously we're here, she went through with her plan at some point. On the night of the murder, Tracy, then age 24, her friend Lisa, who was also 24, Kim, who was 23, and another Tracy, who was 23, had been out drinking and then drove around the murderer's Tracy in her Holden Commodore in search of a victim. At the time, Tracy stood almost six feet tall and weighed 209 pounds. Edward Baldock, who was 47, a council worker and a father of four, was waiting for a taxi after drinking heavily and playing darts with his friends. Kim persuaded him into their car and they drove him to a park on the banks of the Brisbane River. It is disputed whether Tracy, the, the murderer, Tracy got Edward in the car by offering him a lift or pretending to be uh, a sex worker. There he undressed while Tracy returned to the car to retrieve a knife. She then stabbed him 27 times, nearly severing his head before drinking his blood. When police arrived at the scene, they located Tracy's bank card in one of his shoes among his neatly folded pile of clothes. The four women were then quickly arrested. A few days after the murder, Tracy told police that she, quote, felt nothing while stabbing Edward and that she had sat down to smoke a cigarette while she watched him die. Tracy was the only one of the four co-accused who pleaded guilty to the charge of murder. Therefore, there was no trial for her and few details were disclosed to the court as to why this incident occurred by Tracy, Lisa, Kim and another Tracy stated that murderer Tracy had claimed to have vampire tendencies. They said that the reason for the murder was to enable the drinking of the man's blood. During the trial, Tracy said to the media, quote, It's hard to be famous, isn't it? 
a legend in my own mind. End quote. In 1991, a jury convicted Tracy of murder and she was sentenced to life imprisonment by the Supreme Court of Queensland with a minimum of 13 years. Lisa was also convicted of murder. Kim of manslaughter and the other Tracy, who was actually there, was acquitted. In 2006, murderer Tracy uh, assaulted a fellow inmate and a prison guard. The case still commands strong media interest and, uh, and public reaction. In April 2008, it was reported that Tracy was being released. However, it was actually Lisa who was being released under the resettlement leave program, given a maximum of 12 hours leave every two months for six months. Tracy made four unsuccessful parole applications until 2011 when the parole board granted her application. She was released from prison on the 11th of January 2012, despite lying to the parole board. In 2021, interest in Tracy was revived when it was revealed that she was posting images on Facebook of vampires, witches and a pile of skull and bones. Following this, the officers who investigated the case said that Tracy's parole should be revoked. And I thought, okay, so she's out in the open, uh, you know, a loose woman in the society of, I'm still guessing, Australia. So I was like, where is she now? Um, yeah, this I needed to know. So I, I found uh, an article. She's now 54, um, serving a life sentence for the 1989 murder of Edward, and she was released on parole in 2012. Since then, she's posted images containing vampires, skeletons, and even real human remains. It's horrified Edward's family after Tracy made international headlines when she murdered their innocent father and grandfather, Edward, 27 times before drinking his blood. Still on parole, her posts on Facebook under the assumed name Oberon Fairchild include an image with a reference to people being eaten. One meme also stated, do not meddle in the affairs of dragons, for you are crunchy and good with ketchup. Another image appears to be warning, now panic because I'm back. Swear word. Edward's murder um, was quickly solved by detectives who also found a stolen tombstone and pictures of grave sites in Tracy's apartment. Pat Clancy and Mick Austin say the posts are disturbing and her, pol her parole should be reviewed. Uh, these are police officers that I believe led the investigation. Um, quote, the purpose of the murder was for her to be able to drink human blood and that was achieved, Austin said. There was a degree of Satanism involved and witchery. According to her associates who were involved at the scene of the crime, she considered herself to be a white witch and she had to consume blood to maintain that witchery aspect. She showed absolutely no pity for the victim, didn't treat him as a human being and it was just a means for her to achieve her end. Clancy, the detective, also describes Tracy as, quote, a big bully enjoying the notoriety, end quote. When she was arrested, she denied all knowledge. Uh, and then 
as the investiga as the interview went on, she just crumbled and, and ended up admitting it. And she said, and I quote, I then withdrew the blade and I stabbed him in the side of the neck. I stabbed him in the other side of the neck and I continuously stabbed him, she said. He was making a gargling sound. I knew the blood was coming out of his mouth. I then sat down in front of the tilt a doors and I watched him die. Uh, apparently now she lives in the northwest coast or Gold Coast, where she now she now lives there. Uh, under Queensland law, reporters aren't allowed to record an interview with a parolee, so they can't ask her questions about these posts. Edward's family have told have come out and said they find the post distressing and while Queensland Corrective Services did not answer any of the questions they do not discuss individual prisoners so they can't they can't get anything done and how distressing is that you know this lady killed their dad and their granddad and, and she's just out making posts on Facebook about whatever she wants and nothing can be done about it. It's it's really quite sad. And, and poor Edward and all of his family. Um, I, I can't imagine what they're going through, either at the time of the murder, to, by, by a chance meeting that he was waiting for a taxi and Tracy just passed his, you know, came past him and... and yeah, selected him. Absolutely heartbreaking for for the Bulldog family. Um, my heart goes out to to those um, affected by her senselessness. Um, by the sounds of it, she's not a very nice person. Um, yeah, just giving her life causing chaos and heartbreak wherever she goes. But there you go. That is. Tracy crime spree and she's now out living in in society and no one can shut her down or do anything about it and I think her parole should be revoked she's causing more harm you know it's heartbreaking but there you go thank you for joining me for today's episode uh, please do leave your thoughts and comments down below. Uh, I, I do love interacting with them. I think what I might do at the start of each true crime is just come through and acknowledge your, your comments. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a nice little thing. Uh, just to refresh on um, the, the crime spree that I talked about the week before. Uh, be a nice little opening, I think. Because I don't like to... Uh, turn it into a whip and chat and then a true crime I like to uh, you know dedicate it to the victims of, of these horrific people so there you go that's what I might do moving forward just hit on a few of them but thank you thank you and um, thank you Linda uh, wishing me well for moving house uh, it's still Sunday evening so I haven't heard anything yet, there's nothing to report there, but I will let you know as soon as I know anything. And uh, obviously I'm still going to be looking, I can't put all my eggs into one basket, so we're still going to be looking. But I shall see you next week for another true crime. Um, it might be the... I'm kind of compiling up a video and talking about several true crimes that have happened, so that might be next week. I thought it was going to be this week, but I went with this one instead. So much love to you all. Please stay safe out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will see you very, very soon for another true crime episode. I won't say see you Monday because I might be moving house. So yeah, I'm going to upload as much true crime as I can and get it scheduled so it will just release even if I am moving into my new house. But thank you, thank you for joining me and 
see you next week